Hello. In the last episode, we learned about five basic family creation tools, extrusion, blend, revolve, sweep, and swept blend. Using these family creation tools, we created a family of a table. Today, in this episode, we are going to take the same table design, but make it again, but make it parametric this time. We're going to learn how to create parameters like length, width, height, and material. So take this video as a foundation of learning parametric families. Let's begin. Let's go ahead and start creating a new family. It's important to choose the right template. Because we want to create a table, let's go ahead and choose a furniture family template. In this family template, you will see that there are two reference planes. The intersection of these two reference planes is going to be the insertion point of your family when you load it into the project. This is the table that we want to create. The first thing I want to set is my tabletop. The tabletop is at a certain height from my reference level. Let's go ahead into the elevation view and check this out. Because this table family, I want to make it parametric, it means that I want to control the length, width, and height of this tabletop. So let's first create a reference plane that is going to control the height of this table. Let's go ahead and create a reference plane at a certain height. I'm going to create a dimension between the reference level and the new reference plane that I just created. We can also give it a name for easy identification. So let's call this reference plane tabletop. Let's go ahead and select this dimension and change it into a label. Let's go ahead and create a parameter. I'm going to call it height. I have an option of choosing this parameter to become a type property or an instance property. I want to keep length, width and height as my type properties. So every time I want to create a new type, I'll duplicate and create a new type in my project. For this purpose, I want this height to be a type property. And I'm going to say OK to this. Now, instead of the value of the height, now you can see that it's showing you height equals 1227. I can change this height directly from here and make it 900. Or I can go to the family types properties here and change the height value from here. So you can see now a height is a parameter. If I change the value in the information, let's say I make it 1200, you will see that model changes itself. So this is building information modeling. When the information changes, the model updates. and the model updates, the information changes. So now we have a height property. So we are ready to create a tabletop. In this tabletop, I want to also control the length and the width parameters. Using the same process that we did for the height parameter, we are going to create these two parameters as well. Let's create a reference plane that is going to control our width and another reference plane that is going to control our length. I'm going to create a dimension that specifies the length and the width. Instead of giving it an actual value, I'm going to first convert these dimensions into parameters. Let's select one of this and go to create a label. I'm going to create it as a length and I'm also going to keep it as a type property. And change this dimension and change it into a width parameter. Now, if I go into my family type, you will see that I have three dimension parameters. One is height. Let's try to see if everything works all right. The length, let's make it 1200. And width, let's make it 600. So length is 12, width is 6. And in the elevation, the height is 900. Perfect. Now we are ready to start creating a tabletop. So first thing I'm going to do is set my work plane to the tabletop reference plane so that I can start creating a tabletop at a height. And now I'm going to create an extrusion that is between this reference plane to this reference plane. Before pressing escape, you will see that there are four locks visible to you. These four locks are alignment locks. This means that the sketch of this rectangle can be aligned and locked to the reference plane. So so that the sketch automatically changes when the length and the width parameters change, which is why it's very important to lock these locks. Let's go ahead and click on these locks. If you happen to press escape and lose this lock, don't, don't worry about it. It's an alignment lock, which means you can go ahead and create an align and lock. You can check if the entire sketch is locked properly or not by clicking on any one of the lines and you'll see that these four edges are locked to the correct reference planes. Let's go ahead and finish that up. 
Because we had already chosen a work plane, which is this tabletop reference plane, our tabletop is at a height. So when I change the height of that reference plane to 1000, the tabletop will automatically move with it. What about the thickness of our tabletop? One way to give thickness to this tabletop is to directly select this extrusion and go to its properties and change extrusion end to 25 millimeters. So extrusion start is at zero from the work plane and extrusion end is at 25 millimeters from the work plane. Now one thing you have to always remember that not everything in a parametric family needs to have a parameter. That some things could be static. For example, this thickness. If the thickness of the tabletop doesn't change from table to table, this value can be static, just like this. But if this tabletop thickness also changes when the type property changes or a table design changes, then you can choose to make this thickness also parametric. How do we do that? So let's select this extrusion. And instead of typing the value in extrusion in, we'll go all the way right and you'll see a little gray button over here. This is a button for associate family parameter. I'm going to click on that and I can associate the value to a parameter that I may already have. If I don't have a property for thickness, I can always go ahead and create a new parameter. Let's create a thickness parameter and I'll say OK to this and OK. So now the thickness of this extrusion is governed by the parameter called thickness. Let's go ahead and try to change that. Let's go and make it 50. You can see this, this is thicker. Let's change it back to 25. There we go. Now this tabletop is governed by four parameters, height, length, thickness, and width. You can make changes to these values as per your design requirements. The next thing we want to do is to add material to this tabletop. Let's go ahead and select this extrusion and choose the same associate family parameter technique to add the material parameter. In this existing material parameter, I'll go all the way to the right and click on this associate family parameter option. If I already have a material parameter, well and good. But if I don't, I can always go ahead and create a new one. Let's go and make tabletop material. And I'm going to give it OK. Any new parameter that you create will go into this family types dialog box. I can go ahead and change this value to something else. For example, if I make this parameter glass, you will see that the extrusion is turned into a glass material. You can always come back here and change it into something else. Let's put it back to default. Let's change into default again. We're going to continue creating the parametric table in the next episode by adding four legs to this table. These legs are going to be created using the blend option. The blend is going to be between the bigger circle in the bottom and the smaller circle on the top. And we're going to learn how to control the radius using the parameters and add formulas to control the radius between the two circles. So please make sure that you subscribe. Stay tuned. I'll see you in the next one.